In this video, we're going to talk about Alzheimer's disease. So Alzheimer's disease is a type of dementia. And I want to talk a little bit about the difference between delirium, dementia, and Alzheimer's. So delirium is acute. So this would be a sudden change in mental status that is reversible. Dementia is chronic. And this means it's going to be a chronic or a long-term change in mental status that's not necessarily reversible. And Alzheimer's is a type of dementia. In fact, it makes up somewhere around 60% of dementia that goes on. So, Alzheimer's disease, what are some risk factors? Age is the biggest risk factor just because uh, normal age-related changes and Alzheimer's also hits later on in life. There is uh, early dementia or early Alzheimer's that can hit in the 40s, but for the most part it's going to be late in later life. Uh, other risk factors, uh, genetics, family history, uh, being female, and two others uh, that you can see that are not quite so common, uh, head injury or toxins that may have affected the brain earlier in life, damaged the brain, and then later on is more susceptible to the Alzheimer's. So some diagnosis. Uh, Alzheimer's has no definitive diagnosis uh, besides uh, a biopsy after death of the brain and it has to be after death because you're not going to be doing brain biopsies on a, on a living patient necessarily. Um, however, there is gene testing. I told you there's a, a genetics can play a role in Alzheimer's disease. So there's a specific gene they can find in the DNA that shows that the person's at risk for uh, developing Alzheimer's. And if they find that, then they can pr prove that it's Alzheimer's. Um, and then uh, they may do CTs, MRIs, and, and whatnot. Uh, not so much to diagnose Alzheimer's, but to rule out any other causes. Um, and, and the reason this is because Alzheimer's is a gradual progression, but in the early stages, the person is able to adapt and maybe hide their deficits. And so when they get to the point they can't hide it anymore, the family may think this is something new. And they might need to do CTs and MRIs to make sure the patient's not having uh, a stroke or something along those lines. Uh, and once it rules it out, then they can see, well, really, maybe this person's been having problems for a long period of time. So the signs and symptoms of Alzheimer's, uh, the main ones would be short-term memory loss and, and long-term memories as well. So forgetfulness, uh, changes in personality, and poor judgment. And so there are seven different stages uh, that you'll see in the textbooks. I've never had a question on any test that asked me which stage has what. But the general consensus that you need to understand is that there's more deficits in the later stages, obviously. At first, within stages one through three, they call this mild, so mild Alzheimer's, you're going to be having, uh, the patient's still going to be able to adapt, and, and their family and friends may not notice, uh, but they're just going to have minor, minor uh, memory lapses and difficulty with uh, math problems, and etc. Uh, once it gets to the moderate stage, this is marked by the patient's no longer able to adapt uh, functionally, and so they're starting to have problems in everyday life. And this could be paying bills, this could be making sure they feed their pets, making sure they feed themselves. And at this point they need help. Um, and this could be help from family, friends, and as it gets a little more severe, help as in a facility that they need to go to because uh, the patient's not eating, they're not drinking, they're getting dehydration, acute kidney injury. So the moderate stages is marked by no longer, they're starting to be visible to the family and they're starting to need help. Severe, they definitely need to be in some sort of a ner skilled nursing facility. And severe gets to the point where you have the patient so confused that they don't know where they are, they don't know what time it is, they don't know why they're there. They, they could be thinking they're back in World War II. They are, they can, it's also marked by wandering up and down the halls. This is where you hear about the old people wandering uh, down the streets away from their home. Uh, being found lost, not knowing where they are, it leads to incontinence. And in the severe stages, you start having actual physical, not just mental uh, deficits, but physical. Now, they, like I told you, incontinence, they're, they have difficulty swallowing, and they uh, are going to have physical problems as well. So, treatment for Alzheimer's. As I told you, in the mild stages, uh, this just may be education and education of the family. But for the most part, they... Can adapt in the moderate stages uh, to severe to severe treatment kind of kicks in for for nursing 
And so they're going to need assistance for eight activities of daily living. This is going to be helpful eating, showering, feeding. They're going to need, uh, as far as medications, uh, typically you give them psych meds. Uh, if they, uh, there's a change in personality, sometimes they'll get really sad and they may need antidepressants. Sometimes they'll get very anxious and, or very mad and they may need antipsychotics or anti-anxiety medications. Uh, there is a medicine called Aricept that can actually decrease the progression of the Alzheimer's so the person can stay in their stage for longer. It's not going to cure it, but it's going to keep them from advancing quite so quickly. Uh, and then two main things you want to do with Alzheimer's patients uh, is you really want to prevent falls, especially when they become wanderers. And you also want to make sure you uh, promote skin integrity. Um, and so the way you can do this is this is pretty much nursing home nursing at this point. Uh, turning the patient, preventing falls, bed alarms, chair alarms. And so at this point, you treat Alzheimer's is going to be a nursing home patient essentially. And so this is a quick summary of Alzheimer's disease.